The boys of summer are back, and that means sunshine and the beautiful beaches of Jupiter, Florida. Baseball starts tonight on Fox Sports Net. Manager Tony La Russa has his $100 million man, Albert Pujols, in the fold. The Cardinals will welcome some familiar faces back to camp. Jim Edmonds finally healthy, Ray Lankford fighting for his spot, and we say hello to the newest, Reggie Sanders. Florida, Roger Dean Stadium, home of the St. Louis Cardinals spring training site, as well as the Florida Marlins, by the way, the world champions. We are proud to bring you 112 telecasts of Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Net, 110 regular season games, some of the premier games, opening day with a two-hour pregame show, 14 games against the Astros and Roger Clemens, 12 games against the defending champs, the Chicago Cubs. With my partner, Albert Bosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to Cardinals Baseball. Not a moment too soon, and we're proud to bring it to you here on Fox Sports Net. If anything has stood out so far in spring, it has been the pitching. Jeff Supon will get the start tonight. Pitching staff for the Cardinals, a pleasant surprise. Well, I think it's a, not a surprise, because to me, I think they are better than they ever were last year. Supon is a big part of it. Only two pitchers, two right-handers in the major leagues have thrown over 200 innings the last five years, Supon being one of them. And another issue that the Cardinals will deal with, left field and second base. How is this going to pan out? Well, they're starting to figure it out, but it's really nice to report that I think Ray Langford has an excellent shot of not only making this team, but being there opening night in left field. We will take our first time out. This is Cardinals baseball on your home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Net. There's Ray Langford. He's not in the lineup, but that man is six-time gold glover Jim Edmonds. Cardinals baseball is coming up. Cardinal Baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. And by Auto Tire. For straight talk and the lowest bottom line price, you ought to go to Auto Tire. We welcome you to Roger Dean Stadium, a cool, breezy night here in Florida. And Hall of Famer Lou Brock in attendance this evening, along with Red Shandies, the Hall of Famer. Bob Gibson stops on by as well, and that's one of the great things, Al, about spring training having a chance to meet some of these Hall of Famers. Uh, Lou is just so, and Bob and Red add so much to it. They come out, bring up the lineup card. Of course, they get to see Jack McKeon, which uh, those guys all played against or, or had Jack as a manager when they were playing, except for Red. At home plate, it was Lou Brock bringing out the Cardinals lineup. He had the, the Hall most, of Famer. He had the most uh, tough, the toughest question to answer tonight, didn't he? Home plate umpire asked him, who's the home team? Who's the home team? They're trying to figure it out. Jeff Supon will get the start this evening for the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, Al, here's a look at his numbers, both with Pittsburgh and Boston last season. He was very good with Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, he shut out the Cardinals in his last National League start. Disappointing for Boston, but the Cardinals are very happy to have this guy here. He knows how to pitch finesse pitcher and eats up a lot of innings. Those numbers brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts and that graphic really showed you the innings that he is able to eat up as a four or a five starter. Last five seasons, he has averaged over 200 innings pitched and that's what the Cardinals are banking on in this two year contract. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defense this evening. Reggie Sanders and our auto tie around the horn. Vaughn Edmonds and Sanders in right. There you see where he has been. Cincinnati, San Diego, Atlanta, Arizona, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and now with the St. Louis Cardinals. It will be Roland Renteria, Bo Hart, and Albert Pujols on the infield, and the gold glover behind the plate, that is Mike Matheny. Four gold glovers returning for the St. Louis Cardinals. Fun from uh, Oklahoma City, so he's happy to be back in Cardinal Nation. Had a stint with Kansas City, but he said he's never had a defense like he has in St. Louis playing behind him. Abraham Nunez will lead things off for the world champion. Florida Marlins were underway. 7.05 with our first pitch here in Florida. Abraham Nunez, a minor leaguer for the Florida Marlins. Of course, Juan Pierre will be their leadoff man on opening day. He had a separation of a finger. They thought that might keep him out of some action. It's only going to be about five games or so. That's a foul ball. A chance to talk to Juan Pierre, and he did it sliding head first. But it was his right hand, and he caught a cleat on the second baseman, dislocated that finger, but he's taking batting practice now and will be ready for the, the regular season. Nunez, by the way, has spent some time in the major leagues, just 19 games, though, with the Florida Marlins a couple of seasons ago. And congratulations to that man, Jack McKeon, 
National League Manager of the Year. Allo was back on May 11th. Florida was 16 and 22. That was their record when McKeon took over from Jeff Torborg, and uh, the rest is history. World Championship in six games over the New York Yankees. And I think you remember that you talked about last year the Florida Marlins under Jeff Torborg, a very talented team, especially their young pitching, but they had to learn how to win. And Jack McKeon with a grandfatherly uh, stance challenged them. It's fouled back. Count stays two and two. There's another Hall of Famer, Mr. Perez. And his son Eduardo, of course, uh, now with Tampa Bay. Well, the Cardinals disappointed they were not able to re-sign Eduardo, but uh, he got a much better offer and a multi-year offer, and we wish him the best. 2-2 two -two pitch, just misses outside. So full count on the leadoff man, Nunez, with Damian Easley, who's having a fine spring on deck, and then Miguel Cabrera. First on of the scene last year for the Florida Marlins, the 3-2. That's a ball. Let's take a look at the lineup for right, Jack McKeon's Florida Marlins. You saw Abraham Nunez. This is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Then Damian Easley, Miguel Cabrera, Will Cordero, Jeff Conine, Ramon Castro, Jason Wood, Wilson Valdez, and the pitcher Tommy Phelps. Look at Jack McKeon's lineup. This is game four of five between these two teams this spring. The Marlins holding a 2-1 edge. Not only is uh, Jeff Supon a guy that's going to eat up a lot of innings for the Cardinals out, but here's a guy that's in talking with Dave Duncan and talking with Tony LaRusso. Here's a guy that's very much like Woody Williams. When he arrived in St. Louis, Woody was 34, had a record of 58 and 62, and he turned everything around. And of course, Woody doesn't have overpowering stuff, neither does uh, Supon, but he'll mix up his fastball. Good changeup, decent curveball, hits his spots. That's the key. He changes speeds, hits the spots, both sides of the plate, up and down. And when he was younger and threw a little harder, he was very good at getting the ball up and getting them to chase. One ball, one strike on Damian Easley. Damian Easley is an interesting story, and the Cardinals have had interest in him. But uh, I think the Florida Marlins chose to keep him, and so that probably the Cardinals changed the direction, went after Womack. But Damian is healthy now. And he pops this one into left field. Greg Vaughn is under it. That's the first out. And back to first goes Nunez. There's a good changeup, having a hitter off in his front foot. It's all the power out of the swing, and it's usually an easy out. But with this wind, it may not be any easy out. Yeah. Here's Miguel Cabrera. What a story he turned out to be for the Marlins. Hit 268. Good power, young player in their system. Skipped AAA and came right to the major leagues. They really made Juan Encarnacion expendable, and Cabrera takes over and right now every day. This young man that uh, we all wish we could buy stock in. Jack McKeon was comparing him to possibly a young Albert Pujols. Vladimir Guerrero, Pujols type guy, but uh, he's got a lot of power. Seems to have a good head on his shoulders and uh, has the intensity and wants to get better. The Marlins, by the way, have turned over a third of their everyday roster. Derek Lee went to the Cubs for he Sop Choi. Pudge Rodriguez signed with Detroit. We will see Castro behind the plate. He's going to take over every day. And then Encarnacion, as we mentioned, moved on. And Cabrera will play over and right. Another excellent pitch. Pulling the string. Changeup is a great pitch when you can throw it at any count. Here's a 1-2 pitch. All the way. Big crowd here at Roger Dean Stadium. A night game, a rare night game during spring training. And it is sold out this evening. Yeah, the Florida Marlins play five night games. This is the third. The other two are against the Dodgers, but it's the first time I can remember the Cardinals having a night game. And we will be bringing April the 2nd from Memphis. Out in front was Damian Easley, and there's another good pitch by Supon. You can see he really has 
the knowledge of how to pitch, how to change speeds, how to get it, get hitters off balance. And he's played with some you know, not very good clubs, so his 13 wins last year was a career high. I'm expecting to go more. He was terrific for the Pirates and was one of the names out there at the trade deadline as the runner is going. The throw by Matheny is not in time and a stolen base for Nunez. And a great jump there on Supon. If you give Mike Matheny a chance, he's going to get his fair share and more. So you have to believe that that jump was off the pitcher Supon. It wasn't the greatest throw and it was a it wasn't in the best location for the catcher to receive and throw, but it still was stolen off the pitcher. So an RBI opportunity here for Cabrera with a man at second, breaking ball and another foul ball that stays two and two. Jeff Supon has already thrown 19 pitches as Dave Duncan and Tony LaRusso would like to stretch out their starters in the final couple weeks of spring training. Oh, they have got him. Yes, they did. As Hart applies the tag on Nunez. There's two outs. That'll help. Another way how your defense can help you out. A little plan play right there. Ball sails a little bit, but it works to the advantage because it goes right into the runner, helping Bo Hart apply the tag. Two balls and two strikes on Cabrera. A broken bat. Back to Supan. And Florida's done in their half of the first. Cardinals coming up. You're watching Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Net. Bottom of the first. Welcome back to Jupiter at Roger Dean Stadium. Tommy Phelps, a left-hander, our advanced auto parts starter for Florida, gets the start tonight. He spent some time in the major leagues last year. Yeah, he did early, and then he had some arm problems. He probably is not going to make the Florida Marlins staff. He will have to show an awful lot here tonight. Matter of fact, they had Dontrell Willis pitch in the minor leagues today against the Cardinals to make this start for Phelps. A crafty left-hander doesn't throw particularly hard. And here's Greg Vaughn, leadoff man for the St. Louis Cardinals. Got off to a decent start, but he is mired now in an 0 for 23 slump. He hasn't had a hit since early March. And his chances are diminishing to make this club. And Vaughn pops it up left side. The wind will play some tricks on this one. Mordecai giving it a look near the tarp, and it's out of play. I had a chance to talk with Greg and he knows that he has to uh, make this ball club. In years past, he's been a star where he could do whatever he wanted in spring training. One year he hit 50 plus home runs. But it's not the case now. And he said, you know, I've never really had good spring trainings, and hopefully they'll look at my track record. One of the guys in left field that has played well has been Ray Langford. You touched upon it in uh, our open. If this was opening night. Don't be shocked to see Ray Langford in left field. And he would be here tonight if there was not a left-hander on the mound. And we have to assume it's going to be a righty from Milwaukee on April the 5th that afternoon. I have not had a chance to see Ray Langford, but in uh, talking with Mitchell Page, the hitting coach of the St. Louis Cardinals, they believe his swing is cut down. It's more compact. And the fact, and there's a good look at Ray, that, that he wants to be here. It's, it's not a job anymore. It's something he wants to do. Yes, it's, it's a couple factors working his behalf. First and foremost, his knee is healthy. As Vaughn chops this towards short. Valdez coming on, cut off by Mordecai, and Vaughn reaches in his first hit in his last 24 events. Let's take a look at the Cardinals lineup as you just saw Greg Vaughn, followed by healthy now Jim Edmonds, then Albert Pujols, Scott Rowland, Edgar Renteria, Reggie Sanders, Bohart, Mike Matheny, and then Jeff Supine. Let's go back to what you were talking about, though, with Ray Langford, a healthy knee, and some other factors as well. Yeah, the, and the biggest being that after sitting out a year, I think it's his competitive juices, uh, just the, the fact that he's got money in the bank, he wants to be here to play baseball. Not worrying about uh, financial responsibilities, just to play baseball. And I think it's a great story, and, and it's one that I think there's a lot of people pulling for him, and I'm one of them. 
Tony La Russa said that he is in the best shape he has seen Langford in, in the last four or five years. Right. And he's, he's having fun down there. Yep. Here's Edmonds, finally healthy and playing a bit now in spring training. Four for his first 11, batting second in this order. You might see Edmonds bat second this year. It, it would not surprise me. Now the Cardinals don't have a traditional leadoff hitter. So there's going to be, but they've got a lot of thunder in the middle of the lineup. Yes, they do with this guy and Pujols rolling. Renteria, Reggie Sanders, Lankford. That's a strike on the outside corner to Edmonds. 39 home runs for him a year ago. No strikeouts thus far, and he will get in those long funks where he'll strike out an awful lot. I know that's one of the concerns with this lineup with Sanders and Edmonds as Jimmy got a piece, but it's held on by Ramon Castro. Langford, another guy that historically has struck out a lot. Let's take a look at the Marlins' defense behind this left-hander. Miguel Cabrera, we talked about the star last year in postseason playing at the stretch run. This is brought to you by Auto Tire. He's in right. Nunez and Conine also in the outfield. Mordecai Valdez, Easley, Cordero, and Castro is behind the plate. Here's Albert Pujols. Ho-hum, Al. He's only hitting 390. And he says he's still not locked in. By his standards, and he's set off a lofty ones, he's not. Nope. <laughs> National League batting champion last year. I think he's got a chance to make some money this year. But more in the future. Tune of about 100 million is going to suit Albert just fine. First pitch was a ball, the next to Pujols. He's outside. Bill James who likes to crunch all those numbers has come up with a concept called similarity scores and he looked at players by the age of 23 and where Albert Pujols would be comparable statistics. He came up with five names as Pujols hits a rope out of play. Joe DiMaggio, Jimmy Fox, Ted Williams, Stan the Man and Frank Robinson were the five that he came up with. DiMaggio by the way won the MVP in his fourth season his first. But those guys just you know, I mean, they didn't do much in the game of baseball. No. Matter of fact, none of them were playing today. And the batting champ from last year, Albert Pujols, the 2-1 pitch. Albert hits it sharply to the shortstop, and this is a double play. We head to the second. Supine back to work, and there's no score from Roger Dean Stadium in Florida. For the second, you are watching Cardinals baseball on the home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Net. Cardinal fans, MLB.com. Game day audio lets you listen live to every Cardinals game online. Sign up today at STLCardinals.com, where baseball is always on. And by the way, operators standing by until 8 o'clock St. Louis time for Cardinal tickets. Opening day is completely sold out, but there are some dates that you need to be aware of. Of, and uh, one of them being Mark McGuire Day, which is set for April 17th. He will throw out the first pitch, and the first 30,000 fans receive a commemorative McGuire ball. That will be his first appearance back home in St. Louis at Bush Stadium since his retirement. Remarried with a couple of kids, and that's great to see that McGuire is coming back April 17th. A few seats available for that. The Cubs. Something to keep in mind, they are going to set a record at Wrigley Field this year with over, three over, yeah, over 3 million tickets sold. So the Cardinals are expecting a lot of people from Chicago headed to St. Louis. So get your tickets now for that series. Apparently Houston, the way that they have their rotation set up, Al, is that is pounded foul. And we're going to see them a bunch, but early on in that first series, we're going to see Roger Clemens, it looks like, and possibly Andy Pettit. So get a chance to go to, uh, down to Bush and see those two. Bring them on. That's going to be fun seeing those two. Absolutely. Cardinals have seen now uh, Clemens in spring training. That one is hit into center. Lazy fly ball for Jim Edmonds. Basket catch out there for Edmonds. Dave Duncan very excited about this pitching staff. And I think the real key is Carpenter, Chris Carpenter. Who he had a bad inning the other day, but I talked to a few scouts and they said he was exceptional down here. And in the one bad inning, he threw all fastballs and got him up a little bit. Didn't change speeds, but he's a complete pitcher. Here's Jeff Conine, a late pickup for Florida. 
last season from Baltimore and wound up being a great addition down the stretch. You know, I play in Jeff's uh, golf tournament. He still made his home here in South Florida. And I played in several years, and he was always the most popular uh, Marlin. As he gets underneath this one out in front of the pitch. Scott Rowland, foul territory. He makes the catch, the Gold Glover. Five-time Gold Glover, four consecutive after last season, and that was not easy. Well, I think it's only fair that some people have made some criticism of some of the outfielders not making plays, but when you see a Gold Glover like Scott Rowland and previously with Edmonds make plays like this because of the swirling winds, you can understand why an outfielder would have trouble here, and particularly if you put the complication of a of a high sky right. and the bright sun. Two outs, nobody on, and this is Castro, and he lines it fouling out of play down the right field line. Ramon Castro getting a chance now to play every day for the Florida Marlins coming into the season. Last year ran into some legal problems off the field. Finished up at 283. Pudge Rodriguez signed with Detroit, so now Castro will get a shot to be the everyday catcher. This time last year, who would have thought that the Florida Marlins would be the world champs? Not many, if any. I don't think the bookmakers thought so. The 1-1 pitch. Round ball to Roland. Long throw. And a 1-2-3 inning for Supon. Fighting the wind out there. First it was Edmonds. Then Scott Roland. Roland, Renteria Sanders coming up for the cards. No score. And in Jupiter, there's no score. We take a look at our Ford dealers key matchup. And this is the uh, National League rankings last season where the Cardinals were. I guess the one that stands out in a bad fashion, Al, is the ERA. It is uh, at 11th last season, but in spring training, fourth overall in Major League Baseball. So that is getting better. And everybody's getting the work in. But I think uh, we have the defense, we have the offense. Wall jockey needed to improve the pitching staff, and I think he did a good job. Roland, Rentieri, and Sanders for the Cardinals in their half of the second. Redbirds, by the way, scored 876 runs, which was third most in franchise history last year. The scoring runs wasn't the problem. Keeping the other team off the board was, to say the least, right? Well, and one of the things that they have done as a staff down here is they've kept the ball in the ballpark. Roland hits it sharply to third. Nice play by Mordecai to his left. Scott Roland batting 306. So hitting over 300 in spring training. And he's retired for the first out here in the bottom of the second. Well, Mike Mordecai has made a lot of money being a utility player and just not hitting much, but being able to field balls, play numerous positions, and hanging around a lot of big league time. You know, a couple World Series winners, too. Right. Here's Edgar Renteria, only hitting 214, but don't put much stock into that. Last year, he hit 208 for the spring. He finished up last year fourth overall and batting at 330. One ball, one strike. The National League found out what we knew about Edgar, that he is the premier shortstop in the National League and rivals some of those American League guys. Saw the graphic there, 391 against left-handed pitching. Won his second gold glove last year and his second silver slugger. It's hard to believe his fifth season now with the St. Louis Cardinals and fans of the Marlins obviously remember Edgar for his heroics. You talk about the fifth season for Edgar. How about the ninth season for Tony La Russa? Yeah, isn't that amazing? Thirty two wins away from being the uh, sixth winningest manager all time is Tony La Russa. as Edgar draws the one out walk. Congratulations to Edgar Renteria just had a baby a couple of weeks ago. Well, they better give uh, equal time. Here's Tony and see his numbers. The Two thousand wins last year. Reggie Sanders. And he had the air fourth daughter. Born. She was born this spring and so to Gucci. He's a pop of a little boy now. So has had a good spring. 
Sanders pops it back in foul. It's been feast or famine with Reggie Sanders. Uh -oh. A 231 batting average in spring, but his slugging percentage at 615. Three home runs and eight RBIs. Well, I think you just uh, you just see Reggie's going to have a quiet, outstanding season. Yep. Well, he's one of the nicest guys, too. Yeah, that, that's why it doesn't gel with seven years, seven different teams. You're right. But he is, he is a perfect gentleman, a wonderfully nice guy, and now has a two-year contract. He won't know what to do. Upstairs to Reggie Sanders. Defense is shading him a bit to pull and deep for Reggie. A ball and a strike with Renteria at first in a scoreless ball game. And again, we remind you that those phone lines are open back home in St. Louis for tickets. 421-2400. They will be open until 8. Two balls and a strike, and let's see if Renteria wants to run. An account that would be a running count. He's not going anywhere. The pitch is taken inside with Bo Hart on deck. Sanders, by the way, has averaged Al at least 28 home runs his last four seasons. So you worry a little bit about the production that you could find from J.D. Drew. He was traded away, but you're going to pick it up here with Reggie Sanders. You hope it's popped up into shallow center, backing up the second baseman, Damian Easley, and back to first goes Renteria with two gone. It does appear that the Cardinals enjoyed their off day yesterday. And their timing is off a little bit with their first night game because Phelps is not a particularly hard thrower, and yet he's getting in on a lot of right-handed batters and jamming. And it's a bulked up Bo Hart, much bigger than he was last season. And a fine rookie year, hitting 277, only batting 220 this spring. And uh, people around the ball club will tell you as he jacks this one into deep left field, Conine on the move in the corner, and it is a foul ball. About to say that Bo Hart, though, they say is pressing a bit because second base with Vina gone is open and uh, maybe taking some of that pressure to the plate. Well, it's only natural, and uh, it, you can't let it affect his defense because I think he'd make the team because of his defense. You see it's foul there. Uncharacteristically, here in Jupiter, you got the wind blowing from off the coast inland. It normally goes the other way. It's been very windy the last couple days. Check on Edgar. Marlon Anderson is battling for second base, and of course uh, the Cardinals just picked up for Matt Duff, Tony Womack. And Womack had Tommy John surgery about five months ago, but he says he's ready to go, and he actually played in the game today, that Triple A game that Dontrell Willis pitched in, and played in the field, not just DHing. I, I don't think they let him throw though. They're waiting for the doctor to uh, check out the elbow just to give him okay, but he says he's fine. Well, he's, and he made a very interesting point, and he is correct. He's not worried about the elbow. All he wants is his footwork to be correct, because with the proper footwork, it will take the stress off the elbow. Which makes sense, in particular on double play balls, sure. things that eight, he has to go across his body with. Two outs, a 1-1 count on Bo Hart. Tailing fastball, didn't like the call. In the hole, one and two. Bo just busted on the scene last year. Seven for his first ten. It really tailed off in the, the uh, downstretch of the season. It's just 2-11 in August. And strikes out. So Hart is retired, and we head to the third. No score. Score as we move to the third. You're watching Cardinals baseball, game one. 112 telecasts this season, 110 during the regular season. We'll do a game from Memphis, as Al told you. And again, uh, operators standing by tonight until 8 o'clock at Bush Stadium at number 421-2400. Opening day is sold out, but uh, tickets still remaining for that April 17th game, Mark McGuire Day, and the Cubs series in Houston as well. 
It's going to be a lot of fun down at Bush. Here's Mike Mordecai. And the first pitch is foul down the right side. After a rather lengthy first inning, it was a 1 2 3 inning for Jeff Supon in the second. How important was that pickoff yeah. at second base? That sometimes gets you right back on track. We haven't talked about this yet, but a real key for this team is the fact that quietly Jason Isringhausen has been terrific in spring. He's in great shape and healthy. And you wonder where the Cardinals would have been if he would have been healthy the first two months of the season. Of last year, and there's a base hit, a leadoff hit here in the third. You know where they would have been? In postseason. postseason. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. The Cardinals blew 14 saves before June. 14 last year, and Izzy did not pitch until June 12th. Lose by three. Now, there is no excuse because we got into September with a half game lead and weren't ready to play the Cubbies. They took it to them in the first week of September. Scott Rowland playing in on the grass at third base. This is Wilson Valdez. Very shallow is Jim Edmonds in center field. Valdez hit triple A last year at 287. Thirty plus stolen bases, so you'd think that uh, speed is his game, not power. Fouls that out. Literally out of the stadium here at Roger Dean Stadium. Cool breezy night. The sold out crowd. One ball, one strike. Mordecai, the runner at first. Pitch is taken for a ball, just missing inside. Two and one the count. Jason Ryan and Danny Heron were sent to AAA today. There are two other pitchers with him. Evan Rust and Josh Pierce. Ground ball to Roland. Chance to turn two. It's going to be tough. Hart, the turn. They got a double play. Go Hart had to be quick, and he was. 5-4-3, double play. Go Hart, tough as nails. Mordecai gets down on him. Wasn't a typical double play ball. And did the right thing. Look the ball into your glove. Execute the throw. Be aware of the runner, but don't panic. Don't think that, uh, don't bail out of there and not get the extra out. So a nice job by Bo. Brings in the pitcher, Tommy Phelps. With two outs now, and nobody on. See how Supan pitches. You know, he keeps people off balance, gets ground balls when he needs to. Jeff Supan in his six plus seasons, an overall record of 62 and 75, but a bit misleading because of the teams that he's been pitching for. And the 0 2 delivery, breaking ball. He did not go one and two. Angel so, Hernandez down there. buddy Angel. Count stays at one and two. Chopper to first baseman Albert Pujols, a flip to Supon. Some defense behind Supon tonight. The double play turned by Bo Hart. The red hot Mike Matheny leads things off when we come back. Friday, April 2nd, the Cardinals continue their spring training when they take on the Memphis Redbirds. Coverage begins at 7, and it's only here on your home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Net. 
Memphis Redbirds and the St. Louis Cardinals. Always a fun trip to Memphis. Look forward to a great little ballpark down there. They should have a great pitching staff. Mention Heron and Adam Wainwright and all the Cardinal top pitchers, but it's a good sign. Danny Heron didn't do anything to disappoint Tony La Russa or Dave Duncan. It's just that our pitchers are that much better and you give him a full year or you give him more time at Triple A to develop. But he was a much better pitcher this spring than he was last year in St. Louis. We talked to Danny Heron today. He wasn't all that disappointed. He said he pretty much knew this was going to happen and looking forward for the opportunity to get better at Triple A as Mike Matheny follows it back and we're underway here at the bottom of the third. Mike Matheny has had a terrific spring hitting 406. Picked up his second gold glove last season. Had a perfect fielding percentage. Amazing. Made an error the other day, so that's his only one for the year. Get it out he's, of the way. He's through now. And that won't count. Mike Matheny actually put in a batting cage in his house. Back home in St. Louis and worked out with Albert Pujols the entire winter. He said it's absolutely amazing what you can pick up watching Albert Pujols day in and day out. Whether game like conditions or even a batting cage. Check, Check swing, did not go around. Two balls and a strike on Mike Matheny. I, th I think what happens with Mike is there's no reason why he can't hit. Like he did a couple of years ago, 260 plus. But you spend so much time with the pitching staff and the wearing down the mentally, the draining aspect of trying to force feed everybody, the pitchers, taking the responsibility of calling that game, that it kind of wears on his, his uh, offense. Head in the count here, three balls and a strike. And a leadoff walk from Mike Matheny, and it brings in Supon. A pair of walks now handed out by Tommy Phelps. The other two rent to Rhea. Mentioned Supon very much like Woody Williams and pretty much the same guy at the plate too. He hit 279 last year. We'll find out if he can bunt. I don't know how creative Tony is with his pitchers, so. Follows it back with Mordecai, the third baseman, charging. During the regular season, frequently we'd see a pitcher fail to get down the bunt on pitch one, and then some type of hit and run or would be put on, something to kind of play with the minds of the defense. Butcher boy. Supon squares, gets it down. Mordecai to second. Tough play. Got him. Good pick there, out there at second. Low throw by Mordecai, but they still get him at second, get that lead runner. Sometimes you'll ask that pitcher to look in your peripheral vision. If you see that fielder that close to you, you go ahead and have the, the uh, ability to go ahead and swing away, do that butcher block. You've got to hit down on the ball and make sure you don't hit it in the air for the double play. But if somebody's that far down on top of you, you can't bunt it to him. And he bunted it straight back to the pitcher. Just the third baseman was right there. We're back to the top of the order. Greg Vaughn just got under it. Shallow left field. Shortstop wants it. Valdez, two outs. The leadoff spot will be. An interesting spot for Tony La Russa to figure out this year. Tonight, don't miss the series that's taken Europe by storm. It's high stakes late night poker. And Fox Sports Net is the only place to find it every night. Find out what's been keeping Europe up. Late night poker comes to Fox Sports Net tonight and every weeknight at 10.30. Here's Edmonds with two outs and a man at first. Jim Edmonds thinks that spring training should start on about March 15th and probably should end about March 18th. I'd say the 15th is too early. Report well, maybe the 25th. A couple head bats in and let's go. Check swing by Edmonds and a foul ball. Al, I was talking about that leadoff spot. Tony LaRusso was telling me the other day he has flirted with the idea 
This is prior to the uh, acquisition of Tony Womack, but flirting with the idea of hitting the pitcher eighth, which then really kind of diminishes that traditional trait, speed, high on base percentage of a leadoff man. Not a big fan of it. He did it, remember, in 98 with McGuire, but now with Womack in the fold, if he is going to be your everyday second baseman and possible leadoff man, that kind of takes that out of play. Tony, an innovator and does things that uh, are a bit unusual at times, but they're well thought out reasoning. And with his distinguished career, he can do things that other people would get fired for. Yeah. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Edmonds fouls it off. Struck out his first time up. Tony La Russa has had his team's average 93 wins over the last four years. Last year snapped Cardinal streak of three consecutive years in postseason play. The ball gets away and moving up. The runner from first to second, that is Supon. Here's one of those plays that you never see a Cardinal catcher give a base runner an extra base. Mike Matheny, it's textbook on how to block balls in the dirt. And Castro was a little lazy on that one. And little things like that in a nothing nothing game can be a, a win or a loss. Here's the one two pitch and it's popped up by Edmonds left side shortstop Valdez on the outfield grass. He's got it and three innings in the books. The Cardinals and the world champion Marlins led by Jack McKeon who headed to the board. This portion of Cardinal baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Advance Auto. We're ready in advance. Good look at Al's yacht here in Florida. Albert Pujols having a fine spring. He says he's just about set to go. Now the everyday first baseman and uh, taking over and left. Number 12, Ray Langford. So Langford out there and left takes over for Greg Vaughn. Scoreless ball game as we move to the fourth at Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida. Jeff Supon has looked sharp this far. Abraham, Abraham Nunez, top of the order for the Florida Marlins. And the first pitch is a breaking ball and a strike on the outside corner. Nunez walked his first time up, stole a base, and then was picked off at second. Scott rolling in on the grass at third base. One ball and one strike. The Marlins will have a heck of a staff, and not a lot of people are talking about this team. Most eyes with the National League East, the so called experts, think about Philadelphia. You can't discount the Atlanta Braves. They are the defending champs. They've got Carl Pavano, Brad Penny, Dontrell Willis, Josh Beckett. A.J. Burnett will be, as Jack McKeon said, like making a huge trade. He will come back off of arm surgery, and there's a strikeout. The first of the night for Jeff Supon. Cardinal fans, a new ballpark coming soon, of course. The best way to guarantee your seats in 2006. Buy season tickets this year. Become a season ticket holder now, and you'll receive priority seating in the new ballpark. Field box seats are still available. Ask about the new 27-game rolling plan, which includes postseason ticket options. 425-0688. Sales reps are on duty tonight until 8 o'clock back home in St. Louis, so about an hour to go there. 425-0688. 421-2400 for ticket information. That is a fair ball over that third base bag. And easily will try it into second as Langford gets it. And it's a one out double. Uh, you can tell it bounced clearly foul where it landed, but when it went over the bag, it was in fair territory, according to our third base umpire. Like the guys in the bullpen were a little surprised by that call. Well, but you can see, look at these guys are standing around. It's, half of them don't realize it's a live baseball trapped underneath the bench. 
And Ray picked up the wrong button. Or maybe <laughs> <laughs> he did pick up the right one. Uh, it's stuck There's there, There's no right? doubt, yeah. Well, but I, I think it's, uh, <laughs> and you see all the guys giving a ribbing to the third base umpire, but it's not where it lands, it's where it goes over the bag. Those are some of the guys that are not rooting for Damian Easton. Hey man, that guy's trying to take my job. That's a foul ball. Uh huh. And it brings in Miguel Cabrera. Rounded out his first time. He's 0 for 1. Hitting 336 this spring. Three home runs and 13 RBIs. Little chopper left side rolling looks back the man at second on to first two down See, that's a pitcher that knows what he's doing knows he's got a guy at, at second base instead of allowing the hitter to hit the ball behind the runner advancing him to third with only one out or two outs you know where you can score much easier from third off speed gets him out in front gets the ball out in front and let the defense take care of the fourth talking about the new ballpark it has been amazing the response Cardinal fans on the ballpark founders program the response that the Redbirds uh, got overwhelming and moving into that new park in 06 Al they are projecting to have uh, season ticket sales at an all time high the all time record was back in 1990 over 21,000 they're expecting to uh, surpass that in the first year of the new ballpark in 2006. Pulled foul, two strikes. Speaking of new ballparks, one of the buzzes here th this evening is Ted Simmons talking about the new ballpark in San Diego. And San Diego will have over 20,000 season tickets. A downtown ballpark. Oh, that's I can't wait to see that. Right down by the convention center, right down by the marina, right down by our hotel. You got it. And of course, you know about Gaslight Square. Well, you used bit. to. You used I to. I used to. Congratulations. I'd love to say this on the air, but uh, congratulations, Danny and Libby, on your wedding last October. And I actually invited you. And I and I actually had a wonderful time, which was no surprise. And I told Mr. Mooney that if, if he wants to, uh, you know, pay for another wedding, I've got a couple daughters. <laughs> 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 I, his wife wasn't. So anxious to take him up on you're that. always trying to find that edge. <laughs> yeah, what a great time. What a beautiful wedding. It was fun. I'm glad you can make it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. you. Uh oh the 2 2 is pulled foul. We got a moment. We got a first note. We got a big hello. To Joe Conoya. Good Cardinal fan. And uh, in the hospital we want to wish him the best his daughter and son-in-law were down here about 10 days ago and I've held on to this note for 10 days so Joe hurry up and get well and we'll see you at the ballpark 2-2 two, two misses inside this is Will Cordero you proud of me? very proud that you hung on to that note as long as you did shock too me too <laughs> full count on Cordero he flied to center his first time up. And pulls this into left field. Lankford will be tested on this throw. Comes up getting. It. It's a strike. He is safe at the play. He was safe, but let's give Ray Lankford some credit. He threw a seed out there. That ball was right on the line, just a little bit to the first base side. And Matheny and a little bit high where Matheny couldn't block it. You know, he will do anything he can. Damian Easley recovered from his knee problems that got him released from two different organizations. And you saw the veteran sees Matheny on the inside, so he slides to the outside and averts the tag. Good call. It's the best that Ray Lankford has thrown a ball in a long time. There was some zip on that. That's a base hit. Drops into right field. It's 2-0 Florida. Jeff Conine picking up the RBI. His eighth this spring. 2-0 Marlins. That was a good piece of hitting right there. Just a little lob serve. 
you know, out away from him. And just uh, a, a good hitter. Slow breaking ball and had a little hang time. Recognized it, tried to take it to the opposite field and just lob served it out there for the RBI single. Both runs coming with two outs in this inning. We're still in the fourth, and this is Castro, the catcher. A pair of RBIs for Cordero and Jeff Conine. Start to wonder how much longer Jeff Supon will last in this game. Scheduled to make a couple of more starts before the regular season. Still think they would like to stretch him out to five innings. Well hit into right center field on the move. Sanders, he won't get it. Quickly getting it back in. Bo Hart relay to the plate. They're going to get him. He is out at the plate. Great job by Reggie Sanders in the relay from Hart to Mike Matheny. That was easily with a play at the plate with the first run. This time, though, Marlins don't cash in. It stays 2 0. Hits in the inning. It's 2 0 Florida. Very easily could have been three, but what a play here by Reggie Sanders. Well, you see he has all the momentum, but watch here. We talk about don't be your own, you know, base coach. Put your head down and run. Conine was out because he started kind of looking to see where it was, tippy toeing around third base. But it all started with Reggie Sanders getting that ball back in quickly. Here's Albert Pujols as Conine gunned down at the plate. Now Reggie has good speed out there, good instincts. Never hurt himself defensively, and he's just part of this good defense. Albert jammed a bit, popped it up. First time up, hit into a 6 4 3 double play. He's over for two. Let's take that play all the way back. And it starts out here. It looks like a gapper, but Reggie gets to it off balance. But all he has to do is get it back as quick as possible, hit your cutoff man. Bo Hart, a real strong throw here. Matheny, enough time to give you that block where he always will and seal off the plate if you give him enough time and the throw's close enough to the plate. Scott Rowland, well, how many times have we seen Mike Matheny able to brace himself and almost fall and absorb? A punch, if you will. Yeah, it's it's you know he's got all that protection and everything, but the guy has to slide into him, and when he can just kind of fall backwards and absorb the blow, and if anybody comes up hurt, it's going to be the base runner because he's sliding into those shin guards. Scott Rowland rounded out to third, his first time up. As Tommy Phelps is working in his fourth inning of work. Scott was very proud of himself. He went up to his home in Bradenton and had that two game series in, in uh, Orlando. And yesterday, the off day, he said, I got four days in my, my house, had a two hour drive to the game, and I even got a hit. Good for him. He did some great stuff in the off season, too, his charitable works. And a walk for Scott Rowland. Third walk handed out by Tommy Phelps. Well, critics are calling the best damn sports show period a 90 minute frat party, insightful interviews, sharp locker room banner, the best damn sports show period tonight at 11, and it's only on Fox Sports Net. Sweet 16 preview. The regional coming to St. Louis this weekend on Friday night and Sunday afternoon. I'm a Tory Hunter. Teach you how to steal a home run. He knows, do it. He knows about that. Here's Renteria, walked his first time up. Might be the best in the game at doing that, the Minnesota Twins center fielder. Jimmy is another guy that comes to mind, and in particular that series against Cincinnati last year. Did it two consecutive nights. Yeah, those were outstanding. Edmonds won his sixth gold glove last year. Edgar won his second. Four gold glovers. Always talk about the strength up the middle. Edgar and then Rubinia did not win it because of his injury. Edmonds up center and Matheny back behind the plate. And for extra measure, we put Scott Rowland at third. A lot of people talking about the pitching, and they should, of the Chicago Cubs and Houston Astros. But take this lineup. I'll take it in the Central, the Cardinals, and I'll take their defense over those two teams. Also had the best closer 
of those three. Billy Wagner has 44 saves off to Philadelphia. Borowski did an outstanding job. Troy Hawkins, an excellent setup man, quoted, you know, goes to Chicago, but he was a, not really successful in the closing role, and will Borowski be able to do it uh, you know, on a consistent basis after you've gotten a little more of a look of and a read on it. You know this better than anyone, trying to close that game out, get the final three outs as opposed to those three outs in the eighth is a different animal. And Octavio Dotel is going to find out this season. Rain, Wayne Rosenthal, you know, he was also a change in pitching coaches when Jack McKean came, came up to the minor leagues, did an excellent job. This is Tommy Phelps' first start. So he may not be stretched out working into his fourth inning. He has walked four men. Houston's rotation, by the way, I will have Clemens, Pettit, Oswald, Wade Miller, and Tim Redding. Pretty darn good, of course. Uh, Clemens and Pettit went 38-17 last year. Combined. And you know, had a 15-game winner, Robinson, that doesn't make that step. Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Robinson. But uh, you know, it's it's one of those situations. Uh, you're in the National League for the first time for, for Pettit and for Roger Clemens. You got to run the bases. You got to swing the bat. You're behind late in the game. You get replaced. Sanders with first and second. I also have a manager with the quickest hook. The quickest as far as the bullpen usage. It was the uh, most of anybody in Major League Baseball. Jimmy Williams not shy about going to Lidge and then Dotel and Wagner last year. And, and there's no doubt that uh, you know as Jack McKeon's doing a little instructing here that. Cardinals are very much aware of the competition and it has improved in the center division, but that's what makes the games best. You got to play in between the white lines. I'm in agreement with you though. I don't think enough people have given the Cardinals a hard enough look. I think people say because it's a juicy headline. You look at Clemens and Pettit and then you look at Chicago. They pick up Maddox and rightfully so they should get headlines. But what the Cardinals have done and to me in particular the improvement with their bullpen is substantial to what they had last year. The bullpen was the Achilles heel of this team last year. Absolutely. And the starting staff wasn't anything to be bragging about either. No. Throw down at first. Back safely is the Cardinals shortstop. And I asked Tony La Russa as we take a look at this replay. Went to re-strain off a little bit. Able to get back underneath the tag. I asked him, I said, in your mind, are you better right now? And this was the beginning of spring training. You better in your starting staff and relief corps better than any time last year? And he says, no doubt. Yep. Sanders with a base hit into left field. Scott Rowland being waved home. And the Cardinals are on the board with an RBI by Reggie Sanders, his ninth of the spring. Pair of walks and a base hit by Sanders. Little hanging breaking ball and Reggie right there to pull the trigger. Catches it, doesn't have that vicious swing. Scott Rowland coming back. And Reggie's always had a tendency to do a lot of strikeouts, but if you keep those hands back at the trigger position and don't commit, you can get a lot of those gift hits like that, or you can make adjustments on the hanging breaking ball. Marlins bullpen will get some activity going down there. We're in the fourth. It's a 2-1 game, and this is Bo Hart, the foul ball. Bo struck out his first time up, left a man on. And don't kid yourself, these Cardinals, they're not disappointed that uh, they're slated for third. Your pick for first, that gets a little slippery up on that pe uh, pedestal. This is the first time in probably four seasons, maybe five, that the Cardinals have not been predicted to win the Central. Cardinals finished last season out with 85 wins. And I think they're going to improve upon that this year, but I'm not so sure 90 is going to win a division for you with the way that Chicago and Houston have loaded up. Hart jumps on the pitch, but pulls it foul. I'll tell you one thing, you better 
win the games against second division teams because I think there's going to be a lot of parity with a good ball club especially the Central Division of the National League is going to have some exceptional pitching. Yeah. And marquee names that uh, people are going to want to buy tickets come out and watch these guys pitch. And pretty good teams behind them. Chicago is going to have a starting rotation when healthy and Mark Pryor by the way will start the season on the disabled list with a Achilles problem but it'll be Wood Maddox Pryor Clement and Zimbrano. That's the five that they are going to throw out at you. Pretty tough. Little chopper, fair ball, chance at a double play. They got it. Good play there by Mordecai. And spring training for the fans as well. Opening day just around the corner. Heck of a play here at Roger Dean Stadium. Our first of the season, this day in baseball history, brought to you by Schnooks. Paul Dean signs for 10 grand with the Cardinals. Dean won 24 games. ERA just over three with 28 complete games in 1936. It's our Schnooks this day in baseball history. And also, happy birthday to our buddy Doug Stanton, turning 40. 40 today. The graphics guru, Al, in the truck, turning 40 today. Happy birthday, Doug. And he'll be with us all season long. Speaking of the truck, welcome back all the guys, including Mr. Mike Kelly. Tom Mee is with us. Brian McCann, Lindsey Polite will join us. Here's Mike Mordecai to lead things off in the fifth. A 2-1 lead for Florida. Well, uh, Mike Elling got about 25 years of baseball experience the last seven. <laughs> <laughs> and our technical uh, technical director, Swa, is with us as well, I'm oh. told. Okay. Good. I don't know if that's his last name, first name, middle name. Nickname. Nickname. But Swa apparently is the best in the business, and we've got him for our spring training game. Mordecai is one for one with a single back in the third. A race to part of a double play in that third inning. A swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Supon, number two, as he works into the fifth. See Jeff works on both sides of the plate. Number six, expand, he hits a hitter to expand his strike zone. One thing about Supon, he'll keep you in ball games. Little chopper, a chance for Bo Hart. Two down. Remind you that that uh, phone line back home in St. Louis is open until 8 o'clock for tickets, 421-2400. Operators are standing by as we speak. Opening day sold out, but after that, tickets available. The Cardinals, by the way, out drew 2.9 million last year, and I was told today that the Cardinals are ahead of that pace and back on that 3 million mark, which would be good to see. Brian Banks is the pinch hitter for Tommy Phelps. His night is done. It's pulled foul past Albert Pujols. And he believe Albert has a chance at a gold glove playing first base now every day. There is one in his future. Clark was a special instructor for Albert Pujols. Working on that footwork over there. I think we all saw glimpses when he did play first base. Fortino Martinez came in that you know, he was going to develop and be an outstanding one. So. Remember his rookie year, he played three and four different positions during the course of the year, which was even more remarkable for his offensive output. And Banks draws a two-out walk. Second walk handed out by Supan. And it's back to the top of the order. Abraham Nunez has walked and struck out. <laughs> Jeff Supon is due up second. The Cardinals half of the fifth. We'll see if this is it for him. 
And it's a strike on the outside corner. So Rick and Keel today. Yeah, Rick uh, looks great. He's been tossing with uh, Barry Weinberg. He's been doing that every, even before the spring training camp uh, commenced. But keep him shut down for a couple more months. He's actually going to throw a little bit off a of mound in late May, and the Cardinals would like to project him to be in game action maybe by the end of the season in the minor leagues. And you forget he's only 24. And we forget that he's out of options. Yep, that's the other thing you got to keep in mind, too. So, three years removed from his last appearance. Cal, Cal Eldred. Eldred, there he is. Yeah, so, Supon probably, this will be his final end. Uh, but the hope is that in the second half, and maybe in September, we can see a Rick Ankeel with expanded rosters, and then hopefully he shows enough to where they keep him on the roster. But that would be if they do not keep him on the 40-man roster, you can't send him down. Right. One and two the count on Nunez. picked up in our booth considerably breezy night a rather cool night for Jeff Supon to be working Dave Duncan said this is the best of uh, both worlds a chance to pitch on TV and a chance to work on a cool night here in Florida 2-2 Two -two pitch coming slap the other way for a base hit Second time that Nunez has been aboard, and it brings in Damian Easley with two outs. Good piece of hitting here by Nunez just to go the other way. All out away from him, and as you say, uh, not greeting, not pulling off the pitch. He goes with it. Now, one of the signs that pitch is getting up a little bit, and that's what he recognized, saying it the other way, sign of tiring a little bit. That was a 76 pitch thrown. Two outs, first and second with Easley. There's a double and a run scored in this game. He's one for two. And Damian Easley signed a huge contract with Detroit a couple years ago. And last year was released eating about $14 million less. Right. And then he was released by Tampa Bay. But he had a knee injury. And came down to a... Marlins game and all of a sudden they started talking to him and he started thinking give it another shot. And he's healthy now. That one is slicing foul and out of play. Played uh, with Jim Edmonds in Anaheim and I know when all of a sudden he, he kind of surprised a bunch of people by the fact that he was healthy. He can play any position in the infield. And they kind of feel that he's going to play almost every day as filling in for you know, Gonzalez or Lowell or Castillo. It's a foul ball. Only hit 187 with one home run. Seven RBIs in 35 games with Tampa Bay last year. Released uh, right before the season started in late March by Detroit. You don't have his earlier statistics? I do not. Let's see one year he had. And 98. All-star selection, set career highs in most offensive categories. 27 home runs. Lines this one into center. That drops for a hit. A two-out RBI for Easley. He has scored a run. Now he's driven one in. 3-1 Florida. That one year, 27 home runs and 100 RBIs. So... He was the first Tiger second baseman to go to the All-Star game since Lou Whitaker. And ball hanging up a little bit. Hitting the ball back to his former teammate, but this time Edmonds didn't like it. Dave Duncan out to talk it over now with Supon, and he got the first two with a strikeout and a ground out to Bo Hart, but then it was the walk to Banks, the pinch hitter for Tommy Phelps, a single by Nunez. And Supon was ahead of him on 
A count of 0-2. Nunez then fought it off to 2-2 two and, two and picked up the base hit. Now Damien Easley picks up his sixth RBI this spring. Tony La Russa pretty much wants his starters to get as much work as they you know, are destined to get or scheduled to get. But then he'll try and use his bullpen kind of according to game conditions. Earlier, you knew what relievers going to be going now. Now it depends on the game situations. Here's Cabrera with two on and two outs. And again, those uh, operators standing by back home in St. Louis. 421 2400 for ticket information. Stay available until 8 o'clock. Breaking ball that is up a bit, but Renteria gets there. Force play at third. Save at third base. Heads up play by Edgar, his only option to go to Roland, but just a little tardy, and now the bases are loaded. I wonder if Scott Roland was fooled a little bit, because Edgar knew that that was the only play he had, but Scott Roland wasn't standing there like a first baseman. He didn't know where the bag was. And instead of stretching out, he's reaching for it. He yeah, misses. he missed the bag. He missed the bag. So a good call by the third baseman, and that's why I think that Scott may not have anticipated as well as Renteria did. So the base is loaded now for Cordero. <laughs> the umpire was watching the play develop, and he was right there in perfect position. He saw that Scott stepped for the bag, and it wasn't there. He had to re-step. It's a rope. Pulled foul by Cordero. Singled home a run that was easily the first run of this game back in the fourth. And then scored on the RBI base hit by Jeff Conai. Three to one, Florida. So the base is loaded now for the Florida Marlins with two outs. Damage done again with two outs in this inning. Popped up behind home plate and out of play. Sold out crowd. Roger Dean Stadium. Glad even you're with us. Even in spring training, a pitcher doesn't want to come out in the middle of an inning. And it's important for Tony LaRus and Dave Duncan to watch the mannerisms of Supon. Watch how he does he change physically. Can he get execute the pitches to get out of this inning? One-two pitch. Hit into center. Edmonds on the move. And he'll hang up for Jimmy, and he's got it. So, for Darrell, strands of bases loaded. Florida picks up another run. They lead it 3-1. What's on tap is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Upcoming broadcasts, Saturday at noon. WB11 will bring you the Expos and the Cardinals. April 2nd, we're back at it here on Fox Sports Net. And we will be in Memphis April 5th is the season opener. We will also have on that telecast a two-hour pregame show. So we hope you tune in April 5th, the Cardinals and the Milwaukee Brewers. Lane Neal spent time in the big leagues the last three years with Florida, trying to make it stick this year. This is Mike Matheny. Lead things off for the Cardinals. He walked his first time up. Be a pinch hitter that will be Kerry Robinson, it looks like, and then we will see Ray Langford, his first plate appearance of the night. Rick Vaughn made a start in left field. Langford took over a couple innings ago. A ball and a strike on Matheny, hitting over 400 this spring. Neil, as you mentioned, was part of the Marlins. Bullpen last year appeared in just 18 games was not a part of their postseason roster. Tommy Phelps goes four innings. One run allowed two hits three walks and he struck out two. It looks like Cal Eldred will be in the ball game. And we move to the top of the six for the Cardinals. Two and two the count. Jeff Supon allows three runs on eight hits. 
Struck out two. And walked two. Good piece of hitting there by Mike Matheny and a leadoff base hit. Blaine Neal is part of our call to the bullpen brought to you by the St. Louis Renaissance Grand Hotel. Lane 6'5", 248. Back left, throws right. 26 years of age from New Jersey. First look at Kerry Robinson in this game. He will be the pinch hitter. He is one of the candidates for that left field spot for the Cardinals. A pinch runner for Matheny will be Emil Brown. Emil Brown has a lot of talent and maturing and showing people that maybe it's time for him to come up. I've had some people tell me that they don't know, but they wouldn't be surprised if he had the potential sometime to hit 30 home runs. But they've been saying that, and he had several opportunities with Pittsburgh. And of course, Gary Robinson is just wishing he'd have an opportunity. Hazelwood East grad, St. Louis native, battling with Ray Lankford, ironically, his hero growing up in St. Louis. Well, and, and the interesting thing is, Kerry always had the distinct advantage because of his speed. But, you know, Ray Lankford has as many stolen bases as Kerry yeah. Robinson. He has more this spring out than he had the last four years in the regular season right. combined. So, I mean, there's another indication that Ray is, is healthy, the knee's there. And being able to be the complete player he was. Robinson lays down the bunt and pushes it foul. Two strikes now on Kerry Robinson. He will start the season with fewer than 600 major league at bats. So you have the experience of a guy like Langford, or you go for the speed and the non experience of Kerry Robinson. You give him a chance to play every day, but regardless, he is going to get a chance. So Taguchi, by the way, has had a nice spring. John Mabry was one of those candidates out there. And so Vaughn as well. So did Gucci. I mean, they rave about him from where he was three years ago. And physically, he felt like he couldn't pull a ball to where he is now attacking the ball. He's going to be on this team for sure. One two pitch, slap the other way. Kerry's going to make this close. Safe at first, and the ball gets away. And Brown moves up to third base. The speed of Kerry Robinson coming into play. That speed can intimidate defense. Wilson Valdez, you can tell he's a defensive player too. He's got some nice instincts. But I think that this end, Cordero, could have helped out. You know, you have to know that Kerry Robinson can fly. Anytime that infielder takes two steps to his right, he's, Kerry's going to be safe. So instead of trying to stretch out, make the miraculous play, vacate the bag, come over, block the ball, and keep it at runners at first and second, and not first and third. Here's Ray Langford not wearing the customary number 16. He's now wearing number 12. Reggie Sanders, 16, right? You got it. Strike on Ray. Thought it was odd the first time I saw him out of a Cardinal uniform. Now he's back, and I think it's odd seeing him in number 12. Ray's just happy to be wearing the uniform. Yep. Played of, during the winter and played fantastic baseball. A lot of smiles. Well, there's no doubt in my mind he's made this team. I think the only doubt is, or question mark, is if he's starting in left field opening night. Sure. Opening afternoon. First and third, nobody out. One ball, one strike on Ray Langford. Again, ticket line is open for about another 20 minutes or so back home in St. Louis. 4 2 1, 2400. Some people forgot how good a player Ray Langford was and hopefully he's back to being. But injuries cut him down. You cut out the foundation, a bad knee. And remember, he was a start hearing that patella tendon with Ray Langford before McGuire. Ray jumps on the pitch. Hits it into right center field. Brown will tag up from third base and RBI for Ray Langford. Cuts the lead to 3-2. Doesn't hurt himself with that. The 
Ray Langford is going to be the all time home run leader in Bush Stadium. And Ray Langford finds himself in the top five of many all time offensive categories for the St. Louis Cardinals. That's a good point. One down, a 3 2 game, and here's Edmonds. We're in the uh, fifth inning. Roger Dean Stadium. Game one of 112 telecasts this season on your home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Net. Edmonds has struck out and popped out. He's 0 for 2. Fouls that back. Hasn't played much this spring, recovering from surgery that he had during the offseason. Elbow is acting up a little bit now. He'll be ready opening day. See if Robinson wants to do some running. There he goes. Ground ball hit to short, so they avoid the double play. Edmonds retired. Robinson at second base. Shortstop was covering with Carey running, and the ball was hit right to him. You know, one of those situations if you hit a little bit behind. This is going to be Kevin Witt. Pinch hitting. What a spring he is here. He's an interesting character. He's uh, a guy that can swing the bat a little bit. And the good thing is, he can swing the bat coming off the bench. He had 10 home runs last year for Detroit. You know, one of the things that you think about with the bench as it is right now, not a lot of power where a guy like Perez had it last year. Well, maybe Witt is a guy that supplies that power this year. Tony La Russa said intriguing the best way to describe it. Yeah, I was talking to Kevin today and talked about it. Oh there's probably no difference between uh, Detroit and St. Louis and different things. And he said yeah, I think we've already won more games in spring training than I saw last year. <laughs> <laughs> they should be a little better this year with Vina and Pudge Rodriguez. You would think. They will. Can't get much worse can it. Witt faced John Smoltz the other day and hit a triple off the wall. That opened up some eyes. Trying to make a case for himself to be on the club. A ball and a strike. And the important thing is for Tony, you're always looking for those anybody can swing from the left side. Got so heavy right handed, and that's what's really helped Ray and was contributing factor for Kerry Robinson. Hector Luna, the rule five guy, I think he's he's gonna make the team too. But Tony said that if he was a left handed swinger, he could buy a house already in St. Louis. That's why Tony Womack becomes a real interesting yes. component to this lineup, a guy that plays the infield and a left handed bat. And it just complicates things for the opposing manager. And you kind of put in those lefties a little bit. 2 2 pitch. Hold and a fair ball. Down that first baseline, and Witt is digging for a second as Robinson scores. It looked like it went off the glove of poor Darrell. Almost looked like he let up on it, too. But that was a fair ball. Robinson scores, and it's tied up at three. Grand rule double there, and that's important. You know, it's all, it's pinch hitting situation. You see him down in the count, and see him really kind of defensive swing. It wasn't off the glove of Cordero. It just went over the bag fair. Gary scores to tie it. Ball got caught up in the bullpen area of the Cardinals, and ground rule double. And it brings in Scott Rowland with two outs, a 3-3 game. And we are in the bottom of the fifth. RBIs for Lankford and Witt this inning. Rowland pops it up and out of play. You know the Scott Rollins, the Edmonds, the Pujols, the Renterias, guys like that are going to hit. But when you start getting the contributions from the Lankfords and the Witts, those are the spring training surprises. And pleasant surprises. Cody McKay is another one. Absolutely. You know, Cody. Can play first, third, and receive, and throws well. 
very, very likable. They're actually going to induce his wife uh, either tonight or tomorrow with the first baby for Cody and his wife. And then uh, Dave McKay, our first base coach, will be, will be a grandpa for the first time. Cody has had a few major leagues, just a handful of at-bats in the major leagues. But like you said, his versatility of being a backup. Let me tell you, let me more in the field. Real quickly, Dave McKay, when found out that his son was going to be invited to spring train, offered to resign. First class guy, isn't he? Yeah, first class. Didn't want him standing in the way. Kevin Witt has tied it up with an RBI double to score Robinson. 3-3 as we head to the sixth. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box now accepts MasterCard and Visa at most restaurants. By Renaissance Hotel, the official hotel of the St. Louis Cardinals broadcast on Fox Sports Net. Cool night in Jupiter, Florida. Roger Dean Stadium, welcome back. This call to the bullpen brought to you by the St. Louis Renaissance Grand Hotel. Cal Eldred in his second season with the Cardinals working out of their bullpen and he will get some work this evening. You know, Danny, he did a fantastic job after not pitching for a couple of years, almost reconstructing his elbow with pins and needles. Did a great job last year, but once again, I think there's so much improvement in the bullpen. He may be fighting for a job. First pitch is popped up near second base. Who wants it? Kevin Witt takes it, the first baseman. Well, that's perfect. We do a little defense. Kevin Witt, there's Marlon Anderson in second. And Emil Brown out in right field. And Bo Hart moves to third base. Marlon Anderson, one of those guys fighting for that second base position. Now with Tony Womack, along with Bo Hart. They know he can hit the big question mark with him. Can he field? And he has struggled defensively. Pitch up and in to Ramon Castro. Castro is one for two. Jeff Supon last five innings as the starter tonight for St. Louis. Over 70 pitches. So he's getting extended. Pitch hit sharply to short. Brent Torrey is there. Two down. Well, tomorrow the Blues continue their run for the playoffs when they return to the ice at the Savas Center to take on Sergei Fedorov, the defending Western Conference champion, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Coverage begins 6 30. And it's only here on your home of the Blues and Cardinals, Fox Sports Net. Come on, Danny. What's going on? Not happy with what's going on. 24 years being in the playoffs? 24 years, Al. Come on, I don't want to hear that coming to an end. You I'm and I gonna... talked during the offseason. All you asked me about is Blues hockey. You're an avid supporter of the Blues, an avid fan of hockey in general. Not everybody understands my reasoning of why I'm so enthralled in pushing for the Blues to go all the way. Just takes a little time away from you uh, on the radio. A hockey show will supplant the mad Hungarian extravaganza. <laughs> Go Blues. Your reasons certainly are a little different than others. It's a little chopper left side. Renteria, tough play, long throw, and Witt couldn't come up with it. And it's a base hit. Looks like Cody McKay is catch. Mordecai reaches for the second time. He's two for three. A great effort here by Edgar. Tries to get that bounce. <laughs> and with stretch out. So it's kind of the same thing. You know, when you you can do it when you know your catcher's back there, but you can't take the chance when you got your back there that it's going to you know, go into the dugout or do something where you give a, a free base. Concede the base hit, come off the bag and stop it. Here's Wilson Valdez hit into a double play. He's also grounded out. 
Go for two. We're talking so much about Houston and Chicago, you forget that the Marlins, both times that they have won World Series, they were the wild card. The year before that, Anaheim, the wild card. Just get in, right? Absolutely. Breaking ball in the dirt. And Mordecai goes into second base. Cody McKay is catching. Now the interesting thing there, you know, is obviously is Dave, Dun uh, Dave McKay's uh, son. But, you know, I mean, Dave's seen virtually, you know, very few games that he's ever played. And he said, yeah, Tony Russo, you'd think all those years in Oakland, he's only seen him maybe a couple of games. So he came in here as pretty much an unknown quantity. And he's really uh, battling with Chris Widger. Chris Widger has a guaranteed contract, and that might be the difference. They can move him. Cody McKay maybe makes this squad. And McKay, the thing that uh, stands out about him is the fact he can play third base or first or catch. Well, I, I, I mean, and he's a left-handed swing. Uh, Widger, I remember, just struggled offensively. I think he played those other positions defensively, maybe not as good, but. Hit into right field. Brown battling the win and makes the play near the line. He played five and a half. Edgar Renteria leads it off when we come back. Explore Cardinal Baseball by arriving at the game in your new Ford Explorer with $3,000 cash back or 0% financing to qualified buyers. Only at your quality Ford stores, your home run to spring training fun. Ray Langford took over in left field for Greg Vaughn and picked up a sacrifice fly for an RBI. 3-3 game as we move to the bottom of the sixth. Larry Sutton takes over at first base for the Florida Marlins. Derek Wathen over at third for Mordecai. And this is the second inning of work for Blaine Neal. Edgar Renteria breaks his bat and drops in a base hit. I mentioned Derek Wathen over there at third base. That is John Wathen. Catcher and manager of the, the, the Royals. That's his son. Edgar would trade that bat for a base hit. Been on base three times. Marlon Anderson will step in for the first time tonight. There is Hector Luna. Rule five draftees. The Cardinals see so much in him. They know he, he's going to hit. And I, we have the, the expertise of Jose Okendo. I'd love to see him have a month to work with Luna. He can play all three infield positions, second, short, and third. Anderson pops it up on the infield. Shortstop wants it. Valdez. That's the first out. Let's go back to Luna for just a second. He was left off of Cleveland's 40-man roster, Rule 5 draft. The Cardinals can't broker a deal with Cleveland. They must offer him back to the Indians for $25,000. That's one half the waiver price of 50. And it's second time he's gone through the the waiver, or the not the waiver, but the Rule 5 draft. He was returned one other time. But he's got some talent, and they want to... Uh, they will try and make a deal, but I think more importantly, if, if they had to keep him, they would definitely keep him. Yep. Here's Bo Hart. Pitch out, Luna is going, throw down to second. They got him. Well, they guessed right on the pitch out. Bo Hart tried to do all he could to disrupt Ramon Castro's throw, but and still execute, execute it. See him go after it. You're taking off, looking in, almost like a hit and run, but on a pitch out, you're dead. 0 oh, 1 pitch to Bo Hart. Bo Hart was a leadoff man 59 times for the Cardinals last season when he was called up. That was a team high. A 317 on base percentage. 
this season. He's expected to hit down in the order when he's playing. One and two the count. Hart tonight is struck out and hit into a double play. Rounds this one to short. And the Cardinals are done in their half of the sixth. They move to the seventh. 3-3 between the Marlins and the Cardinals. April 18th, all fans 15 and under with a paid admission receive a specially designed Cardinals t-shirt, compliments of Coca-Cola and Domino's. It's also Family Sunday. Fans will receive a free Hunter hot dog and Coke with the purchase of a Terrace Reserve ticket. Kids after the game, come on down, run the bases. It's a grand slam deal. A great day to be at the ballpark. Hope to see you there Sunday, April 18th against the Rockies. First pitch is fouled back by Lenny Harris. And by the way, you have two minutes to call the Cardinals. So if you were just thinking about it for the last uh, hour and a half or so, do it now. 4 2 1 2400. I was thinking about eating. All those good promotions coming up. Yep. Lenny Harris. 181 pinch hits. Years old. I thought you were going to no, say. No, 181 pinch hits for Lenny Harris. That's tops on the uh, all time pinch hit list. Major League. Spent uh, last season primarily with Milwaukee. Was with Chicago for a while. Still. And that one is popped up. At 181. And number two is on the list. Manny Mota. How many? Don't know. Has to be around 150, 155. Oh, you are so good. And no one for the truck. 150. Yeah. You were so good. It was your first guess. I'll take all the credit for it. Reading my lips. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here's Nunez with one down and nobody on. Cal Eldred in his second inning of work took over for Supan, who lasted five innings. Nunez trying to bunt his way on. Tough play. Marlon Anderson won't make it. Eldred almost had it. Perfectly placed bunt, though. Third time that Nunez has been on. Number two. Now you watch him in the drag here. The pitch is inside so he can catch it. And then Eldred trying to catch it just gets over his outstretched glove. Perfectly placed, as you said. And Nunez trying to do everything he can. Showing the Florida Marlins. You know, he was another guy with Emil Brown and Nunez. And all these guys seemed like they had chances. Damian Easley steps in. Scored a run, driven in one. Two for three on the night. And when Damian left, is that where they created the, the spot for the Jim Edmonds trade and, and did he now uh, believe so as that catches easily and he's hit Kennedy. by the pitch Adam, Adam Kennedy. Kennedy yeah so one out it's now first and second number four right here Gerald Williams and Gerald Williams will step in Cardinals had interest in him a while back finished up last season with Tampa Bay wasn't he in spring training with us last year? He was. Yeah. So Williams is going to pinch hit for Cabrera. Lane Neal's night is done. The pitcher, the right-hander, with two innings, took over for Tommy Phelps. And a swing and a miss. Williams had a couple of good seasons with Atlanta. We're in the seventh. With one out and two runners on at first and second. And a ground ball. Let's see if they can turn two. It's going to be tough. No chance here for Marlon Anderson. Hard slide out there at second. Easily going hard after Anderson breaks up a possible double play. March 30th is McTeacher's Night at McDonald's. Visit your local McDonald's from 4 to 8. And proceeds from your purchase will go directly to local schools. Mick Teachers Night at McDonald's, Tuesday, March 30th, 4 until 8. 
Two outs now. First and third. And here's Larry Sutton. He was with the Cardinals for a while. I believe he played in Mexico last year. Talk about a nice guy. Runner is going. Another throw by McKay. And it's second and third with two outs. Watch the runner at third. He flinched a little bit, but staying there at the bag, Nunez. Cody never had the intent of going to second. He was trying to get the lead runner. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Popped up by Sut. McKay giving it a look, and it's out of play. Sold out crowd here at Roger Dean Stadium. Here on Fox Sports Net, 112 telecasts throughout the season. 110 regular season games. The next telecast will be from AutoZone Park in Memphis. Triple-A affiliate of the St. Louis Cardinals. The home opener with a two-hour pregame show. We hope you join us here on Fox. Here's the 0-2 pitch. This bullpen was much maligned last season. Cardinals were 14 and 25 in one run games last year. The bullpen blew 10 eighth inning leads. How many ninth inning? It's up there as well. You know, some of those eighth inning were on the road. Yeah. But I think Tony and Dave Duncan are more anxious to see this bullpen in action, particularly having two quality left handers, Ray King and Steve Klein. Having Izzy healthy is the real key. But Mike Lincoln has been outstanding. He hasn't allowed a run yet. It's a strikeout for Cal Eldred. <laughs> Even though it's spring training, they're going hard. Cards and Marlins tied to three. A portion of Cardinal Baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. By Steak and Shake. Real steak burgers, real milk milkshakes. Served 24 hours a day, steak and shake. Back in Florida, welcome back. Hot shot down to third. Long throw and they got it. Real Brown is retired, one pitch, one out. Matt Parashow, a left-hander is in the ball game as Lenny Harris made that play down at third. And Parashow takes over for Blaine Neal who took over for Tommy Phelps. Took over. Yeah. Spring train. Almost anybody wearing Where a uniform in the stands or in the dugout <laughs> has a chance. You and I, I guess it was maybe last year, a couple of years ago. One inning, the rains come. That's it. We've got every minor league guy that's <laughs> yeah, on, the, uh, that. on the roster or at the complex comes on down to finish the game out. That was fun. Game. Day game and they used everybody, didn't they? Yes, they did. Here's Kerry Robinson, reached on an infield hit and scored a run. Balls behind, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's an infield hit as far as we're concerned. We aren't sure, but we were told they scored in, in an error, but that's a big league hit. Spring With his speed, you gotta know. A minor league here. Like Good this shopping. one could be, not. Show off the mound, makes the play, two down. The Cardinals half of the seventh. Fox Net, Fox Sports Net across America is the new weekly magazine show that reveals sports' most dramatic stories. This week, Diamondbacks ace Randy Johnson talks about the most controversial topics in baseball, plus coaching legend John Wood reveals the secret that made him unbeatable. Fox Sports Net across America is Sunday, 9 o'clock. And it's only on Fox Sports Net. Here's Lankford. He has an RBI and a sacrifice fly. Matter of fact, I did a story for that program on Tony La Russa. Flew out to his foundation in oh, man. California. Saw some video of the, of the, the building and everything. Quite impressive. Oh, it's fantastic. He informed me I'm a member of this uh, 2000 club. My contributions to art. Very appreciative of that. I'll have to get him explain that situation. Some 
wonderful uh, things that you'll get by being a member of it. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Strike on the outside corner. It's going to be a good, uh, good little learning curve for Tony to watch Ray Langford face a left hander. And one that he doesn't really know much about. A ball and two strikes. Langford stays alive. One thing that they've really talked about with Langford is him cutting down on his swing and strikeouts not as prevalent, at least in the spring training. Talk to Mitchell Page, and he'll talk about the guys that he's most excited about. Was the guys that are doing really well are <laughs> Taguchi and Langford. To me, what's interesting is that he's going to keep 12 pitchers. You've got your eight position, and then you think about your bullpen: Isringhausen, Eldred, Tavares, Lincoln, King, and Klein. Your two lefties, and it could come down between Simon Tachi and Calera. We'll talk about that when we come back. We head to the eighth as Langford strikes out. He was frozen on that last pitch. Tied up 3 3. Spring training, we don't have the official disclaimer, but we can tell you don't tape this. No way. Don't tape it. The commissioner has said so. He signed off on this. And this is a production of Fox Sports Net and our good friends from Bud Sports Productions. Well, here's Mike Lincoln. He has turned into a fabulous story for the Cardinals here in spring. He has yet to allow a run. And he had one of the oddest injuries you'll ever hear about. During spring training last year, he was running the outfield track while with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates, and the track was white, and there was a golf facility right by it, and the golf balls were out there on the track facility. He slipped and fell, and as he tried to brace himself, he hurt his shoulder and was out for a considerable amount of time. This is another one, as you say, the brain trust are really excited about. This is Ryan Christensen. Took over for Jeff Conine. I noticed a few years ago the Cardinals acquired a lot of uh, former Oakland players. Now I think the trend is being shaped by Jimmy Leland and former Pittsburgh players. Yep. Not quite what the Cubs did last year. <laughs> no. We got whatever the buddy left. Lofton and Ramirez, Randall Simon. There's the 0 2 pitch. Got him to reach. Anderson will put this away for the first out. That's how we start the eighth. Got a good live fastball with late explosion and a and good breaking ball. Pitch with Minnesota in 99, 2000. Keeps on every year. He's, he's been in the minor leagues and the big leagues in the last uh, three years with Pittsburgh. So it's about time to break through. And make a name for himself. This is Matt Treanor pinch hitting for Ramon Castro. Lincoln, you might remember, was closing games at the end of last season for Pittsburgh. Right, so you got Tavares, you got Eldred, you've got Lincoln, Steve Klein, guys that, uh, you know, say if you get to a point where Izzy needs a, a night off, you're in much better shape for those nights to, to give him the rest and turn it over to someone capable. A real battle in that bullpen will be Simon Tachi and Colero. Both, I believe, have options. For that final spot down there. One ball, one strike. Trainer hit 273 last year at AAA. Florida with 10 hits tonight. Cardinals with six. Just joining us, Jeff Supon made the start for St. Louis. Five innings, three runs allowed. Cal Eldred, a scoreless two-inning frame. And now it's Mike Lincoln. Two balls and a strike. 7,606, a sold-out crowd tonight at Roger Dean Stadium in Florida. Their night game, as Al was telling you, for the Cardinals. Hit foul and out of play. Florida Marlins, 11 year existence, and two World Series titles. 
10 games under in late May last year. Starting pitching, certainly the key, and also Jack McKeon. I'm not sure, but isn't that the only two winning seasons in their in their history? I think so. And they, with winning, uh, you know, records, and they were world champions in both. Ground ball is short. There's two outs. Jack McKean, a big reason why. You know, he rolled the dice. In game six, Josh Beckett. He Number goes out and throws a three-hit shutout. They win the World Series. People forget Carl Pavano really outpitched Roger Clemens in game four. But he came back on short day's rest with the Beckett, and it worked out. Dontrell Willis was the rookie of the year. That was a big shot in the arm. Willis has not had a good spring, nor did he have a, a good final two months of the regular gave, season last year. He gave up, uh, I'm trying to think it was four or six runs or something like that today. He gave up... Uh, Four plus innings, he allowed six runs, four earned on three hits with four walks and two strikeouts. Mark Redman was traded to Oakland, and their fifth starter is going to be Darren Oliver. Yes, and uh, that, that game that Dontrell pitched against was against Memphis, the Cardinals AAA affiliate. 1 1 pitch, he is a strike. Steve Klein back with the Cardinals, a one year deal. He actually looks uh, in good shape, or better shape. He had his bout with the gout early in spring. Look at that. I mean, he's. Isn't he answer? No. He would not want to be characterized as a handsome guy either. That's why we want to get him mad. We want to get him. Game ready. You can see why Lincoln. You know, Run to watch. Watch this breaking ball. Almost backdoored it in there. Yeah, huh? that's what Cody McKay asked for. Backdoor breaking ball. Had left-handed hitter give up on it. And this is Derek Wathen. And give up on that breaking ball, and then it breaks back to the plate. Another breaking ball. Ooh, that's a nasty breaking ball. He went around. Wathen strikes out. Score this frame put in by Lincoln. Welcome back, Steve Klein. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports. Baseball on Fox Sports Net was brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here, Bud Light. Bottom of the eighth. We're tied at three. Cody McKay will lead it off for the Cardinals. New pitcher in for Florida, Toby Borland. He's bounced around a bit. Sure has. Uh, he'll be 34 in opening day from Louisiana. He's got four plus years in the big leagues, but Philadelphia, the Mets, Boston, Philadelphia again, Anaheim, and Florida. McKay rips it into right center field. That drops for a Cardinal hit. The seventh of the night. He's thinking possibly two, but back to first, and it's a leadoff hit for Cody McKay. Now, which one's the dad? Look at, look at Dave's body versus his son's. <laughs> and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but Dave McKay is put together. Cody's a little thicker. And he can show he can hit. And that's what they've been impressed with. Backup catcher. And you'd love to have a backup catcher that hits left-handed. He also can play first and third. But it, the way he swings the bat, I think he's shown them a little bit that they'd like to use him as a pinch hitter more than at times. And again, like we said, with the guys that we think are, are going to be locks for this team, a guy like a Robinson or maybe a Taguchi, but bench players with not a lot of pop, you know, this is where maybe McKay slips in there. Well, and it, and it uh, you know, you touched on it, it creates a problem with 12 pitchers. It's hard to carry three catchers. This is a wit. Yeah, that ground rule double and RBI. And it's, First and only plate appearance. And this is another guy that makes it interesting. Sure. I mean, I think he's, you know, he's solidified himself a little more because of the fact he does have a little more pop. Now Wilson Delgado on deck. Yes, it is. He's back with the Cardinals. Trying to make a, a statement. You know, the interesting thing you were talking about. 
that 12 spot be, being between Simon Tachi or Calero. If Alan Bennis didn't have the setback and he's through today, I think he's a lock. Yep. They say he is back to pre surgery and maybe even better. And it was multiple surgeries, but Alan Bennis was one of the best young pitchers in the National League. And very, very smart, he knows what to do with it, but he had his velocity back up in the mid 90s. The 2 1 is pulled foul. McKay was off and running with the pitch. 2 and 2 the count. Mid 90s, huh? Yep. Jim Henry was the uh, college coach for Alan Bennis. And really, yep, at Creighton and gave him a shot to help him out, get back his uh, career in order with the Chicago Cubs for the last couple of years, at least work in the minor leagues, well, and signed as a free agent with the Cardinals. And then he did him a favor by getting him to Texas. He just didn't have the stamina. 2-2 two -two and a strikeout of Witt. Caught him looking, and now it's Delgado's turn with one out. Cardinal fans looking for the perfect way to entertain clients, employees, or family. The Cardinals have a party area just for you to check out our private party rooms and suites, which include unlimited beer, soda, and snacks. 425-0600. Book your party at Bush. Hey, remember we had that uh, party with Hungo last year? I remember. I got a few, few uh, Saturday nights off and everything like that. Maybe we'll have to do that. This year. I want to party with fans. I think I get some of my buddies. I want to party with you, Al Raboski. Danny Cox and Kenny Reitz came with me one night. Got a bunch of guys. We'll try and, you know, I can't make every night, but maybe we can maybe we can get the uh, get the marketing department get going on that. A hungo night? Oh shoot, we go out and party with the fans. This is Delgado. The check on McKay after his leadoff hit. 3-3 game. Florida jumped out to the early lead. And we're tied at three. I'll get Andy Bennis and Danny Cox to protect the mad Hungarian from the fans. Okay. You could do that. You're not going to mess with Danny Cox. Andy Bennis is too nice of a guy. <laughs> Is that against the rules anymore? Yeah, I think they got other rules they're trying to enforce. And that's a strike. And Delgado is called out. Back to back strikeouts. And it's up to Luna. Hector Luna. Number 76, shortstop Hector Luna. Is Ringhausen, by the way, throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. <laughs> Another intriguing part about Luna is that if you keep him, obviously uh, you look towards the future a little bit. You don't know about the future of Edgar Renteria. He is a Ooh. free agent to be. Ooh, don't say that. Don't I say agree. But I think they come into the equation. But the intent is, and and uh, I have been told by a very good authority that the signing of Albert Pujols has absolutely zero, uh, you know, it does not keep them from signing Renteria. Their full intent is to sign Renteria. And so anybody that says, well, you gave Albert all that money, it means you can't sign Pujols, or you can't sign Renteria is incorrect. They'll make every effort to do so. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And back to the pitcher, Toby Borland. A high throw to first, but still they get him. And the Cardinals are done in their half of the eighth. You are watching Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Net. <laughs> Top of the ninth, it's a 3 3 game. Spring training baseball on Fox Sports Net. Midwest Sports Report is coming up. Let's check in with Brent Stover. Brent? Thanks, guys. Coming up after the game on the Bushlight Midwest Sports Report, we're talking baseball. Take your Cardinal phone calls at 1 888 Ring Fox. Plus, the Eli and I get ready for Duke this weekend. That and more after the game. But for now, we send it back to Jupiter. Gentlemen.
Thank you, Brent. Jason Isringhausen, as we talked about before, did not pitch in a game until June 12th last season. There's certainly a big, big difference as why the Cardinals did not make it to postseason play, but he is healthy and he has looked terrific here in spring. Huh? Well, he has, and getting his work in early in spring, that Tony will take his closer and pitch him early in the game, so he's facing major league hitters. At this stage, he tries to use him like he would a closer and try to get him acclimated for the season, no matter what. Uh, who the hitter is or what the situation is. This is Wilson Valdez. First man to face Izzy. Quickly two strikes. With Harris on deck and then Abraham Nunez. We've been told that if this goes into extra innings, we'll play one inning and call it a night. Fine with me. Got to ease into spring training. That's right. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Jason Isringhausen had been toying with a uh, changeup earlier in spring. He's got the great fastball, good curveball. Trying to develop at least one more pitch. I remember his cutter, too. That's right. And one two is hit to Anderson for the first out. Friday, April 2nd, will be our next telecast on Fox Sports Net. The Redbirds. We'll face the St. Louis Cardinals, the Memphis Redbirds, St. Louis Cardinals. Coverage begins 7 right here on Fox. And it's very difficult for a closer to incorporate four pitches. And one guy that was very successful, Trevor Hoffman, had four. And now that changeup is his number one pitch as he's lost his fastball. Trevor Hoffman trying to come back this year for San Diego. To deal with Rod Beck. He signed, I've not seen that. One ball, one strike on Harris. Rod Beck, a great story for the Padres last year as Harris hits it to short. Luna is there, two is left. There's a strike over to Kevin Witt. Two down here at the top of the night. Number 27, And it brings in Abraham Nunez. He's had quite a night on base three times, a pair of hits. Stole the base, picked off, struck out looking. But I think you're talking about the positive side. He's, he's done some good things. Did not go around. 3-3 game in the ninth. This is our first telecast of 112 this season on Fox Sports Net. Opening day, two-hour pregame show. So I'm sure we'll go on the air at 1 o'clock on opening day. You got it. Be hosting that uh, extravaganza? I will. You will have quite a hand in that extravaganza, <laughs> trust me. Your <laughs> hands don't hurt your arm. I'm getting in mid-season form. Yeah, you're beating on the monitor that's blink. <laughs> One and two the count. He Sop Choi's moved to the on deck circle. Part of the Derek Lee deal with the Chicago Cubs. Marlon Anderson as we go to break. Bottom of the night coming up from Florida. Cardinals trainer Barry Weinberg. As we move to the bottom of the ninth in a 3 3 game. Marlon Anderson will lead things off. Against Toby Borland. Fourth pitcher used by Jack McKeon and the Florida Marlins. Uh, I'm not sure Jack has any more available. The Cardinals probably don't want to stretch theirs too thin. So let's win it right here in the bottom of the ninth. Bo Hart is on deck. Jack McKeon was discussing, I'm sure, that option with uh, Tony La Russa between innings. 
Will this be our final half inning of play? Danny uh, Whitey Herzog had an MVP of spring training. And sometimes people couldn't understand why Ralph Citarella won that award three or four years in a row. Ralph Citarella was went on every road trip. And if he got into a game like this in the ninth inning, tied, Ralph came in to pitch, and we didn't go to extra innings. <laughs> Games ended, huh? <laughs> and I mean, I mean, he just—he was a great pitcher. He, he was a good Triple A pitcher. Maybe a little short for the big leagues, but he—you know—it was just one of those weird things. And Toby Borland may be getting the chance to be the Number MVP. 31, uh -huh. the this might be the Cardinals' MVP. We'd like to see it, wouldn't we? A victory's a victory. Ball gets away, but Anderson can't go anywhere. Toby Borland looks like Larry Lubers to me. Remember Larry Lubers? Yes, yes. From a couple of seasons ago. Much traveled. Borland and Lubert. Maybe it's the same guy. Anderson fake going to second. Bun is down by Bohart. Throw to second into center field. Anderson on his way to third base. And he is in there. You want the Bud Light play of the game? You get it. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. The Bud Light play of the game, and Al take us back to the fourth. Well, Jeff Conine kind of lollipopping around third base, and it cost him a run. And that could be a crucial run because it's the difference of the game right now. Of course, there was some good action on Reggie Sanders stopping that ball into right center and then getting the ball into Bo Hart, who made a strong throw to Matheny with a great block. First and third. Infield drawn in. Nobody out. Here in the bottom of the ninth, Emil Brown a chance to be the hero. Looks at a strike with Kerry Robinson on deck. It's a situation here, Toby Borland. You can't walk guys in late in ball games. But also, I mean, he could make this ball club if he does a job. Right on the pitch, fouled it straight back, 0 to the count. And this is where you get into stage of spring training. And a bat like this could be the difference whether Borland makes the club or not make the club. And you could email Brown I think has shown an awful lot. He's, he's always been a, a tools player. Ooh. Strikes out. But tools players don't often sometimes don't become good players. Now it sets up a possible double play, but you've got the speed of Kerry Robinson at the plate. Yeah, so I mean, you really got to consider that from the defensive standpoint. Orland had one job to do with Emil Brown strike him out or pop him up. Got the strike out. Now I can see a little light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, this young catcher, and maybe even Borland, not that familiar, but. Kerry Robinson and his excellent bunning ability. Langford on deck if it gets to him. One out first and third. Winning run is Marlon Anderson at third base. Now they're intentionally passing to load the bases. Ray Ray's got a chance to be the hero. Already has an RBI tonight with a sacrifice fly. Lankford wearing number 12, as we talked about, waiting on deck. So they're going to load him up for Ray. Midwest Sports Report is coming up after a ball game here from Roger Dean Stadium. Sold out over 7,000 tonight. It's been a rather cool night here at the ballpark, and now Langford steps in with the bases loaded. The only man that counts out there, Marlon Anderson. He's the winning run. Number 12, Lucas Ray Langford. Now you're playing the percentages here. Yeah. 
Load the bases up, get a force out of any play, but with pretty good speed, put a lot of pressure on the pitcher and catcher. Infield is drawn in, outfield obviously very shallow. Blankford struck out his last time up. Sacrifice fly was hit to center to score. Kerry Robinson. Ball one to Ray Lankford trying to make this club. Or an injury or something. I think Ray has shown he will make this ball club, but he's got a great shot to just solidify. And this is why Ray Lankford came back. Because he misses these opportunities, this competitive situation. Popped up behind home plate, out of play. A ball and a strike oh, on Langford. Glad you're with us here on Fox Sports Net again. We want to remind you 112 telecasts throughout the season, 110 regular season. We'll have the home opener and the season opener from Bush Stadium. A ball and a strike on Ray Langford. Sticks the bat out, hits it to the opposite field. This could win it for the Cardinals. It is a fair ball. Langford wins it. Anderson scores, and the Cardinals win it. Four to three in the bottom of the ninth. Nice going, Ray. Made Jerry Clinton pretty happy with that one, and made me too, and made the Cardinals a winner. Four to three. St. Louis wins it. Langford, a pair of RBIs tonight. Yeah. Sticks the bat. For Al Roboski and our Bud Sports crew, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Expos and Cardinals will be the next game on television. Midwest Sports Report coming up now.